Anyways, and first, before I get started, just a, uh, you know, a personal um, shout out to, uh, to Saul, Susan, Tori, and the, and the Biff community. Uh, these guys uh, believed in me and uh, peace, love, and this dream and this vision, you know, long before, you know, other people, and uh, that's not something that we'll forget, so I thank you for that. Um, it's ironic that I'm speaking on a Wednesday. It worked out nicely, and uh, let me explain. Uh, years ago, uh, my doctor accused me of being a hypocrite. Um, he accused me of being a hypocrite because he says, you're so busy, you know, traveling around the country and the world, telling everybody that creativity can be life-changing and can, can help you. He says, uh, how about we start listening to uh, your own advice? So I promised him and made a commitment to him on the spot, uh, to him and to myself that in 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning, no matter where I am in the world, no matter what I'm doing, I paint and I create. Obviously, it's, it's good for me and gives me some peace of mind, uh, but I think equally as important, uh, it's a reminder uh, that I have a mental illness and, and I've got to take care of myself. So this morning was no exception, and I got up even a little earlier to get started, and uh, I thought I would uh, share with you uh, what I did this morning, and I'll, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll read the, I did, I was my, I was thinking about Biff and being here among so many of my, my friends, and uh, this is what I wrote, this is to Saul, this is for you, pal. Thanks for your help in connecting the dots for so many of us here today, and this is my painting called Connect the Dots. So... That's for you, brother. So I'm going to take you back to uh, 1984. Um, I was a 20-year-old uh, junior uh, at The Ohio State University. Thank you. And uh, OH, I've got to say that. I-O. Okay. Anyways, I was, a, uh, I was there on a tennis scholarship, um, living out my dream of, of playing Division I you know, sports. And it all looked pretty good on the outside. Unbeknownst to me, unfortunately, uh, my mind was being overtaken by these terrible, obtrusive, unwanted thoughts that I was powerless uh, to fight. And um, my mental health was spiraling out of control. And basically, I was losing a battle uh, with my mind. Well, I didn't come here. Saul didn't ask me uh, to, to come here today. Um, for you guys to feel bad for me. Instead, um, I want to tell you what, what happened to me. I'm sitting there at Ohio State, and I'm uh, 20 years old. I'm scared. I'm alone. I'm petrified. I think I'm going crazy. And what am I supposed to do, right? Um, I can't talk to my teammates. They'd think I was crazy. I can't talk to my coach. He'd probably bench me. Um, I can't talk to my parents because I don't want to burden them any further. Um, then they worry about their son. Uh, there were no mental health services available in the mid-1980s at that point, so I did what, what, what any good athlete would do, right? I sucked it up, and I got worse. Well, as I was saying, Saul didn't ask me here today for you guys to feel bad for me. Uh, instead, I'm here uh, to tell you I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm one of the lucky ones because I got diagnosed. I got diagnosed with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and for the last 30 some odd years, I've fought a debilitating illness that impacts me every day of my life, even as I stand up here in, in front of you uh, folks today. But again, you know, through medication, exposure therapy, uh, a loving family, an incredible support network, many that are, are here today, I've been able to have this, this wonderful life. I got three beautiful kids, a beautiful wife, and it all looks good on the outside but meanwhile fighting, you know, a personal hell at times. Well, I think I've been thinking too much about my illness recently. I've had to talk a lot about it, and it, uh, it gets me thinking way too too much about it. You give me a second. I apologize. 
Well, the good news for me is I found creativity. And creativity literally changed the course of my life. It was like I found some kind of a superpower, right? And when I painted, it made me feel better, so I figured maybe it helped somebody else. That's it. That's it. And over the last 10 years, I can't even tell you how many thousands of times that I've, I've shared my story, and people are very kind. They think it's courageous to get up and tell your story, and to be honest with you, I don't even think twice about it. I think of it more as you know, my obligation and my privilege to speak for so many millions of people that can't. The funny thing is, and what does amaze me, is every time I share my story, how it empowers other people to share their story, their struggle, their journey, and often their connection to mental health. Just uh, uh, maybe eight weeks ago, I had the privilege of giving one of the keynotes in London at the YMCA 175, uh, which was the global uh, celebration of their 175th anniversary. The YMCA is the largest uh, organized youth movement in the world. There were uh, 3,000 youth representing 120 countries, um, and I think over 100 million people. And I was very proud to be there knowing that they were going to talk about mental health. And so that day when I, I went to, to come up on the stage, I had a little extra giddy up in my step, and I, I felt a little something special as to, to what might happen. And I got on that stage and looked out at our world's youth, and I shared my story, and I got to the point where I was talking about my routine on, on Wednesday mornings, and I decided uh, that I would make it personal with these guys. So what I decided that I would do is I would challenge them. I would challenge them to invite creativity into their lives. And I told them that I didn't care what they did. I didn't care if they painted, they drew, they did a poem, they sketched, they took a picture. But I told them if they sent me a piece of their artwork, that I, in return, would send them an original piece of my artwork as a small token of my appreciation for them taking care of themselves. I didn't know what was going to happen, to be honest with you. And that simple prompt enlisted hundreds of submissions from all over the world. People sharing not just their art, but their story, their struggle, in a vulnerable way that I can't communicate to you in words. I, I wish I, I had the, you had the opportunity to read and look through all of them, because I think what you would probably do, I think everybody, you'd probably cry a little bit. You'd probably laugh a little bit at some. Um, I think you'd be inspired, just like I was. And I think most importantly, I think you'd find some hope in, in reading these. You know, I don't have that opportunity today to, for you guys to do that, but what I thought I would try is maybe give you a sampling of a few. So if, this is one that came to me, hey, from Greece. I don't know how to draw it all, but I just wanted to express through art, as you said, how I felt when you were speaking. Your speech was so inspirational that you filled the room with art. From Canada, your passion is contagious and your presentation gave me the push I needed to try to sketch a little. It's not something I'm used to, but I enjoyed it, and I'm pretty happy with the results and intend to start drawing a little bit. The next one from New Zealand. You were inspirational and moving. I don't have any art for you, but here are some of my words. Your history is written but your future is a blank page. Write your own story of adventure and exploration, risk and uncertainty, and love, always love, for without it, our history is a blank page. Again, from Canada, you brought me back to my roots. I've been 
setting aside my creativity this past year, and my anxiety has risen. Your talk made me realize that I do the same as you without even noticing. I always say my art is therapeutic for me, helping me understand my own feelings. Today, I was feeling anxious, and I thought of you. And I went back to my studio, and I thought I would share this with you. And one last one. Thank you for your words and your actions. Thank you for being brave. Thank you for your call to action. And thank you for reminding me to be a little creative. I'm making time once a week to stop the emails, stop the meetings, and the crazy, and do something just a little creative and free. These are people I've never met in my life. So how, how does this happen? Well, when you share your story, you build community, you build safe space, you build trust, and you build a kinder, gentler, more empathetic world to have these kinds of conversations around. But this is work that we are going to have to do together as a community. Somehow, we have got to harness the power of creativity and storytelling and make it a little easier to not just talk about, but to support mental health and wellness. You know, mental health disorders are rising at an alarming rate. By 2030, it'll be the single largest impact on our global economy. And as I travel, people always ask me, you know, well, why haven't we made the kind of progress that we need to? Because, to be honest with you, from my perspective, we're nowhere. And that's not to put down organizations like ours or other incredible groups that are doing wonderful work, but I'll let you on a little secret. The demand and the need is exceeding our ability to supply it, and the gap continues to widen. My answer has always been very simple. Invisible and misunderstood is a tough combination. And on top of that, it's hard to talk about. And then on top of that, it's tough to get access to. Now, I might not be the smartest guy in the world, certainly not in this room today, I can assure you. But I do know one thing, that you can have the best thing in the world, and if you can't get it to people, you can't help them. That's simple. So, like many that are in the crowd today, we decided to take action. In 2010, almost 10 years ago, I co-founded an organization called Peace Love with my cousin Matthew Kaplan, who's in the crowd today. And we had a goal and we aimed to help millions of people share their story and use creativity in the arts to help them find peace of mind. To build communities where being vulnerable was actually valuable. And building workshops that were not only accessible, but adaptable for any type of population. Today, we work in prisons, we work in schools, we work in hospitals, we work in after-school programs, we work on Skid Row, we work in um, behavioral health space, we work in uh, PD partial units, we work in advanced Alzheimer's units, and everything in between. And it's funny, I was thinking, the more work we do, and the more impact we have, the more we realize, the more work we have to do. Right? So, to bring this thing full circle, in the spirit of, of this gathering in front of so many of my friends that I admire so much and I know have both the, the will, the vision, and the capacity to help so many people. I want to go back and make it personal like I did in London, and I'm going to challenge all of you guys. I'm going to challenge you to invite creativity into your life, for yourself. Not for your business, not for your work, 
for yourself. And then I want you to paint something. I want you, you can cook something if you want. You can compose something. You can rap something. You can dance something. I don't care what the heck it is. If you send it to me, right? Send it to me at that address. I'll get it, trust me. I'm going to send you an original spar as a, as a small way of me saying thank you to you guys for taking care of yourselves. You know, we have so many social issues that we have to deal with as a society today. And mental health and wellness is just one. But before we can change that conversation and before we can help others, we got to take care of ourselves. This revolution I'm talking about starts with us. Thank you.